Hey everyone, welcome back to Pajama Crafts where I do crafts in my pajamas. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Sarah and I love doing awesome home decor on a budget and most of it is like rustic country looking decor, farmhouse, shabby chic, boho. I like to do a little bit of everything but as long as it's looking old, antique, rustic, that kind of stuff, I'm all about it. I'm really excited about today's video. I did four different um, fall signs for you guys and different kinds of styles and the first three are really special to me because I used some scrap wood from my grandpa's shop that I found while we were going through things before we sold the house and so that makes them extra special to me. So for this first one, I'm just using some white Waverly chalk paint covering the entire board. Um, I only did one coat because I wanted that older looking wood to show through. And the way I achieve this look is just by starting in the middle of the board and then going towards the edges. Um, so more of the paint goes in the middle and then light it goes more lightly toward the edges so that it turns out um, a little more transparent around the edges. So it's been a while since I showed you guys my process that I do with my Cricut to get my stencils that I use for paint like with the contact paper from Walmart. Um, you can use Dollar Tree too but I've noticed that my um, when I use Dollar Tree contact paper sometimes the adhesive um, when you're taking off the stencil just sticks to your project and then I have this like really sticky residue all over my project and it's just really really hard to get it off so I started using Walmarts and um, it's just way way better it's also really really cheap like it comes with like a lot on one roll and I think it's like five dollars but I think it might even be cheaper than Dollar Tree for like the amount that you get but I'll just show you real quick how I how I make those and then I'll leave a link for like a more in-depth video on how I do those um, but that was with the Dollar Tree contact paper. Same concept, just using Walmart stuff now. Um, but here's my mat. I use this to measure um, my sign and like how big I'm going to need to make my words. So I put this over the sign and um, basically <laughs> the amount of room that I have to work with is this entire sheet. So it's about 12 by 12 all the way around. Well, it's a little bit bigger, um, but this is how big like how much space I want to use for my words. If you had a smaller sign, you just want to put it on here and see like how many across, like five by five or whatever, and then keep it the same on your computer screen within those squares. Um, because the computer screen, for me at least, looks smaller than this, so you want to make sure that you're actually measuring it by this. So okay, so this is what it looks like when you first sign in. I'm gonna go here to New Project, and this is how it pops up so you can see the squares. You just want to make sure that you stay within that range. So I'm going to be staying within 12 by 12 to make my design. So first I'm going to go here to images. And I am going to search pumpkins. Because I want to put a pumpkin on my... Okay, seems like I probably need to spell it correctly to find what I'm looking for. There we go. <laughs> okay. So, as you can see, there's tons of different options. If you don't have Cricut Design Space, you can just look for one online, you know, on Google or something, like a free printable, and transfer it that way. Or just get, like, a stencil. There's, like, so many different ways you can do this if you don't have a Cricut. You guys know that from, like, all of my videos before I got a Cricut. Um, but, yeah, so I'm just going to look for the pumpkin that I like. Um... I really like this one and one thing too you can click on like a bunch of things if you want to like you see a different one like ooh, I might like that one better um, you can definitely like click on it and then once you go to insert images it's gonna put everything up that you clicked on and you can pick which one you like better I do that a lot cuz I'm like which one do I like the best so see like if I click on three different ones and then insert images it's gonna pop up with all three of them. Where the heck is the other one? Way down, way down here. I don't know why it does that. 
See, but then I go put them side by side and I'm like, hmm, definitely like this one the best. So that's the one that I'm going to keep. And then I'm going to go ahead and do some text. And let's see, what do we want it to say? Pumpkin patch for sure. And I want that part in all caps, so. Trying to hold this in type with one hand. Um, pumpkin patch. And then you can go up here and change the font. These are all the Cricut fonts. Um, you can also download your own fonts to Cricut. Don't know how. I'm really bad with computer stuff, so I have to ask Zach how to do that. Um, but they have like a bunch of different fonts on here that are really cool, so I really haven't worried about it yet. But I'm sure at some point when I just have tons of extra time, I would love to do that. So what I'm doing, so now I'm going to click on what I have here. I'm going to move it up here. And I'm not going to show you the entire process because this is really hard to do with one hand while I'm holding the other one. But I wanted to show you too. Like I always unlock it. Let's see. If you don't unlock it, this is how it looks when you try to enlarge it. Like, you can pull it longer, but you can't pull it wider. Oops. If I unlock it, I can make it wider, too, so that I can make it kind of the dimensions that I like. Um, so then, once I'm done with that, I just want to show you, too, that you can curve it. So, basically, nope, that's not how. Um, wait, how do we curve it? Oh, right here. See, so I'm gonna do that, and I'm probably gonna add a few other words down here. Um, and then basically, I'm just gonna make sure that everything is within those squares that I wanted to do, and then I'll show you guys when I start cutting it too. Okay, so I just wanted to show you guys really quick um, how this pops up when you click the link in the description. I will leave the SVG file link below so that you can. Um, use this for your own with your own Cricut if you want to um, and I don't know how to do free printables yet like just for a regular printer so I'm sorry about that but um, this is how the SVG file looks and I will share this with you guys um, in the description like I said but I'm gonna have two files linked below so just so you can see exactly what the difference is um, this first one, I didn't weld everything together, so if you just go to make it, since everything is like a different color and everything, if you're going to use vinyl, it's going to pop up like this so that you can use different colors and things to print it. So, basically, um, each thing that I made, it's going to pop up with a bunch of different cuts over here, um, so you have to cut it like a bunch of times for each little piece, or... Um, you can go in and customize it down here and change this if you want to. That's why I'm sharing it like this. Um, but I'll also share one that's completely welded together in case you want to do the whole thing. But, um, the reason I'm sharing it like this is because this arrow, I don't really like it for this sign. Um, but I did go ahead and use this one. I don't really like this part because, I don't know, it just looks like native or something to me. And I couldn't find one that I liked, so I'm basically just only going to paint to here so that this part is not on here. Because I just don't think it really goes with the pumpkin patch, like, sign. Um, so if you wanted to change this out for a different arrow, you can definitely do that. And, like, so you can customize this one, basically. Um, and then let's go back. And I'll show you the one that I welded all of it together. It's going to be this one, and I will leave a link below as well. But I think you can't customize it as much. Um, so this is how it looks when it's all welded together. Um, but if you want to do it like I did and just like not paint that part, then this is really easy because when you go to make it, it's going to be all one thing. You can print it out just like that. Also, if you needed to change the dimensions and stuff like that, the other one would be better too. Um, you know, if you wanted to just change it around and make everything different sizes and things like that. But yeah, so I hope that helps you guys out. And let's keep going on this. This is the one that I'm going to make, so I'm just going to click make it. And my computer's being really slow. 
Um, but then it pops up and shows you exactly how it's going to um, look and be positioned on your mat when you cut it out. So then you push continue. And this says no device found, so that means I just have to go over here and turn on my Cricut. And then it should pop up here. Okay, and then I have my dial set to custom because we want to make sure that we cut it out for contact paper, which basically I just go here, browse all materials. I don't think it has a contact paper one, so one of you guys gave me this tip a long time ago. If you go like all the way to the bottom, oops, if you go all the way to the bottom, there's this washi tape setting and that's what I do for the contact paper so then done and then you can start loading your materials so this is the tiniest desk ever it's not even actually a desk it is a giant cooler um but hopefully this is going to change soon and we'll have a little more space for my crafts but I just went ahead and opened it up oh my goodness so dusty um then I have to pull mine out so that we have enough space to actually cut. And my mouse pad is one of Bree's books. <laughs> okay, so this thing keeps rolling up like this because it's near the end of the roll. And um, I need to clean my mat because it's not that sticky. I actually need to get um, a standard grip mat because I just have these light grip ones. So I did get a really long standard grip one but I don't need a long long one for this I need some square standard grip ones too so anyway I'm gonna go ahead and load this since it keeps rolling like this I'm gonna be standing here the whole time it's doing the cut to make sure that I can push it down if I need to while it's going um, and it might fail and I might have to do like um, a new piece <laughs> we'll see if we can make this one work or not so first thing we're gonna do because sometimes once it grabs it then it kind of holds it down for you so I'm hoping so what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and load it oh shoot no okay okay and then we're gonna press go oh lord Oh goodness, okay, get in there. Oh man, okay, it's in. <laughs> Hopefully it stays in because look at this. So I keep trying to like hold it <laughs> while it goes. And it's really hard to see on this like the cut because it's clear, so I apologize for that. Once I have used up all of my clear contact paper from Walmart, I will get a, um, I will get like a colored one so that you can see the design better and then I'll just use this clear kind for my transfer tape. I use this for the transfer tape and for the stencil itself. Now of course you can use regular vinyl for these projects too. The reason I like to use the stencils is because for one they're really cheap um, and also for two, I like to have that really rustic look of when I'm able to distress the words. And so I only get that with paint. If I'm using vinyl, it looks really nice and polished, which you want for some projects. But for me, I love the look of the sanded, like, distressed paint letters. And so this is an easy way to achieve that. If you don't have a Cricut, like I said, you can easily um, get free printables that you can transfer on or you could use stencils. I used to use stencils all the time. It's like my favorite way to do letters before Zach got me the Cricut last Christmas. So, um, yeah, there's just there's tons of different ways that you can do it. But hopefully this works out with this rolling paper. Once it's done, it just pushes it all the way back out and tells you to unload it. And here we have it. You can't really see, especially with the lighting in here. You can kind of see some little cut marks. And that's because this was rolled up so much that it was kind of coming up. So it might have cut a little bit through the actual paper too. Which is kind of a pain, but I just don't want to waste any contact paper for no reason. You know what I mean? 
So once I actually start painting, you'll be able to see the letters. So once it's all cut out, I'm gonna go ahead and do what's called reverse weeding. So uh, instead of taking the part off that is around the letters like you would do with vinyl, I'm taking out the letter part so that when I put my contact paper on my project, then the part that I'm painting in is the letters. And then I'm just using some of that clear contact paper from Walmart. It's the Duck brand. Um, I really love it, but I'm just using some of that as my transfer tape as well. So I just put a piece on top and I did end up running out. So I had to go pick up some more at Walmart during the middle of this video. Um, so you will be able to see a little bit better later in the video on the third project um, what it looks like. When I use that colored contact paper, you can see the letters a little bit better when I'm weeding them out. So right here you can see when I paint my arrow, I don't go all the way to the end because I just wanted, to, wanted it to be just a straight line for the arrow. Um, I just didn't really like how that arrow looked with this pumpkin sign, so I just didn't paint the little feathery part on the end because that looks more like um, Native American. I just I didn't feel like it went with my pumpkin sign.
talking about when I was saying I use the mat to measure how big um, I want to make my words and everything on the actual computer. Um, because like I said, on the computer, the squares are actually smaller than this <laughs> because I've held up things to the computer before, like smaller signs to see how big I want it. And then when I printed it or cut it, um, it came out way too big for my sign. So I realized the squares on the computer are actually smaller than these on the mat. At least on mine. I don't know how that works. But um, so what I do is I just like line it up to the edge. And then I see, so this is basically a little over, probably like 13 inches. So, and then here only goes to 10. But obviously I don't want to make my words like all the way to the edge of my sign. So what I do is I usually leave at least about an inch on each side so it doesn't look like huge for the piece of wood. You know what I mean? So this one I'm probably going to do maybe a little bit smaller than that even. So I might leave like an inch and a half on each side. So basically, I'm going to want to do this about um, probably 8 by 9. So I want to make sure that my design is 8 by 9 inches and they'll fit here in the middle of my sign. Um, and so that's what I'm going to do on the computer. Now I know I need 8 by 9. So that's how I do that. It's pretty easy. So for this last project, I actually got this piece of wood from Home Depot. It's like $6. It's really big. And I got two of them to make signs for our wedding, but I ended up not using this one. Um, I still have more wedding DIYs to come, but I want to have our wedding <laughs> before I show you every single thing that I made. Um, but anyway, for this one, I just decided to use some vinyl that I had on hand. It was from Arteza, and it's just like the self-adhesive vinyl, and I will go ahead and leave a link for that in the description below if you are interested in using that. It comes in the squares, um, which is really nice because it doesn't roll up on you or anything. Um, and then I just used a few different <laughs> designs and things, or the pumpkin here that I'm doing was one that I found on Cricut. I just searched for pumpkins and this was one of the things that came up. 
I'm not able to leave the SVG files so you guys can make this one, unfortunately, um, because my computer was being terrible this day and it was not letting me save anything. But it's all pretty simple. I just wrote everything out myself or, you know, um, on the Cricut Design Space and just picked different font fonts and different sizes. Um, and then I just went ahead and attached it all to my board and I love how this one came out too. It's honestly not my favorite style. Um, I like the first one much better um, but I figured might ha might as well have some fun with it and do several different styles so just to give you guys a few different ideas. camera did cut out at one point and I didn't realize but this arrow I got from Michaels I was going to use it for the wedding but we're ending up not using it now too um so I just went ahead and added it to the bottom of the sign and I just wrote open daily on there um well I just used some vinyl you know like the rest of the sign and then it came with this jute hanger on it. I just cut it in half and then I'm using my staple gun from Walmart to attach that onto there. I was going to use um, some like metal chain to hang it like the ones that you see at Dollar Tree for plant hangers and things like that. Um, but I thought I had some and I guess I didn't so I just decided to use the jute that was already on there and I think it comes out really cute too.
washing dishes? Yeah. Good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good job. Yeah. Are you putting all the bubbles on the sponge? Yeah. yeah. All right. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. All the day long. <laughs> you silly. Mm -hmm. Thank you.